This is Corsair's first ever gaming laptop, and there's really nothing quite like this on the market. So Corsair is a company that's probably best known for their PC hardware. So they make cases, uh, like power supplies, keyboards, mice. But a few years back, they picked up a streaming peripheral company called Elgato. You might know them from making like capture cards and stream decks. Uh, and this product here feels like a combination of their efforts. This is the Corsair Voyager. It's a premium, thin and light, full AMD laptop that's designed for gaming and for streaming. Now, this video is sponsored by Origin PC. They are a company that customizes PCs and laptops. They're also owned by Corsair, but for this laptop, they can tweak it to have like a faster CPU, uh, more RAM, more storage, and they can even do a custom paint job like this one if you want to. So if you're interested in something a little bit over the top, uh, be sure to check them out. So that's Origin PC. Now, for this review, I'm gonna be focusing on the retail unit, not like the upgraded version, but the basic, Corsair versions. So when I first heard that Corsair was gonna do something like this, the first thing that came to mind is like, this is hard. Like so many companies have tried recently to get into that gaming laptop space. Like Samsung comes to mind, LG comes to mind. They've tried and quite frankly, they've failed because it's difficult in this space, it's competitive. But right out of the box, they were off to a good start because the build quality on this laptop is excellent. It's on par with some of the best stuff out there. This has a very untraditional hinge design. Like the hinge operates on arms that go on the outside of the device instead of the inside. And in the past, there have been many companies that have built something like this that have had terrible hinge issues. So when I saw press photos of this thing, like before they launched, I was concerned. Having gotten it in, this is a very solid hinge. It feels sturdy, it's one hand openable, and it opens smoothly, and it holds its angle or position really well. Uh, it opens back maybe 150, maybe 160 degrees. I think they did this hinge really well. Also, the paneling is quite good, especially for a thin and light device like this. Like, there's no flex on the keyboard deck. Like, even in this grill area where a lot of devices, you can just tell when you press down on it, it's not as sturdy. This is like rock solid the whole way across. It is a very fingerprint prone finish, but that's just the nature of metal laptops with a black anodized finish. Now at the top of the keyboard deck, you're gonna see this S key macro bar. It's a series of capacitive touch buttons that you can customize extensively in the software. So you can adjust the RGB lighting, you can make it run macros, you can run double macros. So if you're streaming and you wanna change the look of your room, if you've set it up, you can hit like the S3 button and it'll go to like a blue mode, uh, like a dark mode if I press S4 and then I've said it's like a purple light for S5, but like you can adjust it to do whatever you want and just to return to do not just lighting, but also audio or video settings. Like if you want to switch to a different camera angle or if you want to mute your mic because you're eating, it can all be done with just a single button press. It's very convenient for certain types of users. Now it's not as good as a physical Elgato Stream Deck. Like if you have the full console with buttons with like different changing icons and everything, that's gonna be more useful than this. But this is built into the system and it's a tilted display so you can easily see what's on the screen. And also in the middle of this macro bar, there's a display and you can have it show your battery percentage, uh, the time, and there's also this CPU load monitor. It's kind of neat. I do wish that the whole thing was a screen where you could like adjust the icons and stuff on the actual macro bar itself, but it's just the middle that is a screen. Now the keyboard is a mechanical keyboard. It uses the Cherry MX low profile switches, and I don't know what they're doing differently in this implementation of it, but it sounds and types differently from other Cherry MX low profile devices that I've used. So the one that comes to mind is like one of the original uh, companies that have done it was Alienware. So they use the same kind of mechanical switch. And this device has this, this like ring when you type on it. Uh, and every iteration I've seen of this keyboard in other laptops has had this ring. It's not like the most annoying thing in the world, but if you type really fast, that ring is there. This device, no ring. It's like, Right, it sounds like a regular keyboard, but it is the same switch. My guess is they use some kind of like padding or some kind of material to dampen that sound. But it does feel different to type on the Corsair keyboard. It doesn't feel as snappy to me as the Alienware. It still has that clicky mechanical feel with a distinct bump, but it doesn't feel as snappy of a keyboard as the Alienware iteration of it, at least not to me. Uh, one thing to note, the function keys up top, like the smaller keys, as well as the arrow keys, like both the side keys and the up down, are not mechanical switches. They're just regular membrane switches, I think. They just, you can tell, they just feel different.
uh, than the regular keys. The trackpad's nice and big. It's got a nice glass surface, but the click mechanic isn't perfect to me. It could be a little bit tighter. There's also a fingerprint sensor at the top right. And because it's Corsair, you get full control of the RGBs in their software and you get very bright and vibrant colors on this keyboard. Now there is a very interesting uh, feature that is on this device that has never existed on any other gaming laptop before. So when you have a wireless accessory, like wireless mouse or headset or keyboards, you normally have these receivers, these USB receivers that you have to stick into the USB port of your laptop to be able to get these devices to work. This device has a built-in wireless receiver for Corsair accessories built into the motherboard itself. And so I have a Corsair mouse that is, is it working? Yeah, it's connected to this device, not through Bluetooth, but through the wireless receiver, but there is no receiver plugged up to this device because it's built in. So this slipstream technology is what Corsair is calling it, is only compatible with other Corsair accessories that have this slipstream tech and it allows you to connect multiple peripherals to this device without a single dongle. There are a couple things to keep in mind though. Number one, it again, only works with Corsair devices, so it kind of locks you into that ecosystem if you wanna utilize it. But secondly, on that initial setup, all of these peripherals need to be connected to the laptop at once, and the included cables for these devices do not connect to this device properly. You're gonna to have to supply your own cables, and I'll explain why in a second, because this device, the port selection on it, is very limited. So there's three USB-C ports, one SD slot, but only one USB-A port. And on a gaming laptop of this caliber, it is really limiting to only have a single USB-A port because you just have peripherals that you connect to a device, especially a streaming capable device that are USB-A, including Corsair's own peripherals. So if you're gonna use this, I think you're gonna have to set up dongles or get separate cables that will connect up to the USB-C ports. Uh, okay, so the display, this is, a very nice display. It's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's a 16 inch QHD panel. It's fast, it's bright. It's got AMD FreeSync Premium. It's got great colors, but Corsair is claiming that you can hit up to 625 nits of brightness on this panel. But from my measurements, I'm only getting like 500 and change. So I'm not sure where that extra brightness is supposed to be coming from, but I can't seem to hit it. But 500 is still very bright for a gaming laptop. Uh, now, the webcam. So at the top of this display is a 1080p webcam with a sliding privacy cover on it. So you can close it off when you want to, but the image quality is not good. Now there's software built into this that allows you to tweak the image. So you can adjust like color and brightness and a few other settings, but no matter what I did, the image was just way worse than what I would expect it to be. Now, I normally don't go ham on like the webcam of a gaming laptop, right? I just normally skip over it. But on this device, like this is a streaming capable device. I more than streaming capable. It's like a streaming focused device. It should be a good webcam because even if most people use an external, the one that's built into this streaming gaming laptop should look better than most other gaming laptops, but it doesn't. And I hope that it's something they can fix with software or some kind of firmware update in the future. Okay, now performance on this device is very good. It's an AMD 6900HS on this unit with the Radeon 6800M GPU. Very strong performance, solid frame rates in games. All the perks of AMD Advantage shine here. So smart shift, uh, smart access memory, smart access graphics, which is their MUX switch. It's a solid performer. The GPU that's in here, the 6800M, is similar in performance to like an RTX 3070 Ti. So in some cases it's better, in some cases it's worse, but it's in that region. But I also tested this system out when it comes to streaming. So the idea is that you're playing a game, but you're also capturing that image and feeding it out onto a stream. And it handles it pretty well considering it's a you know an eight core CPU and it's all done in one unit, but it pushes the system hard and the fans will kick in quite audibly. So if you're doing a live stream and you're mic'd up, you're gonna need some kind of noise suppression to deal with that fan noise because you're like inches away from the fans of this device. That's just the nature of streaming on a laptop. The fan noise is actually very low in the quiet and balanced modes. I think they've done a good job tuning this device for light to moderate use. It's just that in extreme fan mode for like the best performance, it's like any other gaming laptop. It's loud, but not like crazy loud or anything. Now inside you can see the fans along with the vapor chamber, and you also have access to the Wi-Fi card, uh, two RAM sticks and storage. It's all very fast stuff. The speakers are quite average. They're not great, but the battery is big. It's 99.9 .9 watt hours. It's a solid eight hours and a bit of light use, but that's with the screen at 250 nits and with all of the RGBs turned off. If you wanna have bright lights while you're doing this stuff, it's gonna significantly reduce your battery life on this system. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this conversation with the topic of price, because when it comes to tech, the overall evaluation that I have on a device heavily hinges 
on its price. And this device is extremely expensive. It starts at $2,700. That's for the 6800HS model with the 6800M GPU. I mean, it's a powerful system at the base, but it's just shockingly expensive. See, the thing is, in this day and age, there are really good gaming laptops that offer comparable performance for significantly less. Like if you look at some of the established players out there, Asus has like the M16, it's like five, six hundred dollars cheaper than this. They even have devices that are like half the price of this that are <laughs> very similar in performance, okay? But all of those devices, like the good ones out there, they don't have metal builds, they don't have the stream bar, they don't have the mechanical keyboard. They don't have that slipstream, like the wireless receiving thing that's built into the device. There's so much stuff that's unique to this system that nobody else has. And the thing, I've said this before in other videos, if you have a product that is truly unique, technically you can charge whatever you want. Whether or not people buy it is something else, but you can charge whatever you want because no one else has something like this. But at $2,700, this sits on the shelf with the most expensive gaming laptops, like the Razer Blades, the Alienware X15s, like the Lenovo Legion 7s, like literally top tier stuff, the most expensive gaming laptops you can think of, this is in that price point. Does it sit alongside them in terms of like overall product quality? I wanna say yes, but this is new. Like this is the first laptop they've made. Like I feel like in order to get to that point where you're charging that kind of money, you gotta earn it. You gotta have years of kind of reputation of building up this rapport that yeah, you can make good laptops with good support that don't bust, like all of that stuff. Cause you need that history to be able to charge that kind of money. At least that's my take on it. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind, this is the launch price. It could go on sale. They could come up with cheaper configurations. It's a really good system. And if you can get it for a cheap enough price, it's a great pickup. But until then, it's a very expensive system. Uh, it does come with this cloth case though. And it's got a zipper. It, whoa. It is a waterproof zipper. I think it's like taped. That alone is worth like 700 bucks, right? 